Hello, we're checking out a camera today here, but just before we get into it, a quick reminder, please like or dislike this video if you didn't like it. Comment down below, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and click the little bell icon which tells you when I'm uploading stuff. What have we got here? It's a little camera from Isheen with the lovely catchy name of the 19S. And it reminded me a little bit both in the description and look of the Cadex Rotel, which was a really good camera. It described itself as a Starlight CCD camera. But I have to say, normally these sort of things are actually CMOS sensors, but you know, we won't judge, we'll have a look, see what's in there. Anyway, taking that off, removing the packaging, we get this little guy. It comes in red or black, a uh, 2.1 or 2.5mm lens. This is the 2.1, I like them nice and wide. And it's got the sort of normal uh, voltage input, which takes 5 to 30, quite wide range, ground and video, and it's got a little OSD thing there for changing various gubbins. Not quite sure what you can change it, we'll find out. Delving under there, we get this little bits, lots of little bits. And we've got this little, quite different looking joystick connector for doing the OSD. And there's the, the cable for that one. We've got this quite different uh, power and video cable where it's actually got these little servo style connectors. A nice uh, flexible silicon wire there. We've got a, a couple of screws for mounting it, a lens cloth, and a few instructions about things. But don't get a mount for this one quite weirdly. That's uh, very unusual in these sort of things. You'd usually expect one, but nothing here. Well, let's hook this up to a quad. I've got my normal quad that I tend to swap cameras over and over again. We'll hook it up to there. Um, we'll see how it does and we'll, we'll have a quick look at the OSD and see what's there for us to play with. Okay, so the camera is installed and I've just got the OSD just to show you what's going on with that. You will notice that I've had to borrow from another camera. If you can just see the inside of that, this, that plastic surround, this came from the Runcam Oscar edition of the Phoenix, which I just took out. And if you've got a more traditional larger frame there, this is like more micro size in this mounting, then you will need something like that which doesn't come with the camera. But um, let's turn it on and we can go through the bits and bobs. Okay, so we are powered on and if we remove the lens cap there, for your viewing pleasure, here's a toy hamster with a hat on, a pirate hat in fact. But uh, what I'm going to do for now is just take the OSD away, which is that switch, and let's go into the menu and see what's there. I think it's pretty much just the real basics, which way's up and which way's down. So we've got uh, exposure, white balance, date night setting, video setting. It's weird that it says image size 1080p. Like, I don't quite understand how it's going to do that. Oh, DWDR is off here, so, so this is just the scene of nothing in particular. Yep, turning that on is definitely going to improve stuff. So let's do that. I should really show you with this little guy in show, shouldn't I? Off, on. It's definitely lighting it more. Is it, is it even? Anyway, put that on, turn, oh that's it, I guess we save and exit. So that is our, what we got, there's my light, there's me, hello. Um, yeah, that's about it really. All I've got to do now is just take this back off again, mess with the tilt maybe a little bit and we'll take it out and fly it. Okay, so we got the little Isheen, oh, I've already forgotten its name, 19S or something bizarre like that. Not very catchy is it? in the quad. Um, I've just done a flight and since that time it's gone a little bit dimmer. So I thought that's interesting, tried to do different conditions. It was quite sunny before, now it's a little bit dim. So let's get it up in the air again. Yes, yeah, so that was me talking about the camera after its initial flight. So I thought before we go and talk about that second flight, we should show the first one where it was quite bright. So here's how it looks and flying on the camera, I was like fairly happy with it. I have to say it's like, Everything is lit quite well. There's no sort of dark spots. The only thing I noticed and picked up on my goggles, it's kind of, it always looks a little bit different when you watch the DVR back, but goggles wise, I was thinking, you know what? I think everything looks a little bit too light. It looked slightly washed out. Is it um, over, 
overdoing it on the highlights. And I kind of noticed that, especially in the lighter areas. That said, it's not sort of whiting out anywhere or anything. So it's still pretty good. But let's go to that second flight where it was a little bit darker, which is where we go from here. And it's not an awful lot different. Um, what I can see is, you know, we've got decent colours here. I do notice that sometimes some of the greens sort of smudge into the other greens. So we haven't got a huge amount of contrast in like the greens there. It all looks a bit samey um, as we're going along lighting the ground like that. Our cloud detail is lost but uh, more importantly we can always see what's on the ground if we if we do stick it into the sky. So at the point where we stick it into something very light we can see the clouds in more detail but we don't lose any of the earth which is pretty important stuff. So it's certainly no Cadex Rattel, but at the same time it's a cheaper camera and it's doing a fairly good job, I think, of, of what we've got here. Of course there is potentially some fiddling about to do with the settings and stuff. I, For some reason I, I never generally do that, I fly at stock, I see how it goes, but if you want to fiddle with it you've got that option available. So what was interesting about that day is um, did this flying this is around sort of midday one o'clock in the afternoon so that the sun was reasonably bright there it wasn't quite in display it was sort of behind the clouds but I also went out with some friends later that night at about uh, between five and seven o'clock and I thought this would be a good opportunity to see how the camera is in a slightly lower light or at least very different light so here we are in early evening flying and the sun is a lot lower and the lighting detail has changed. You can sort of see the sun kind of a bit just on the horizon there. Although the way this light is really quite interesting. So it's it's trying not to make anything darkened. So it sort of lights up uh, a sort of bigger area than it would have. So to the naked eye, this actually looks quite different. The camera manages to light this reasonably evenly. I, I kind of quite like this effect. Um, at, at the same time, I think it's you, you're either going to like it or hate the way it does this because it is quite different than the eye perceives it and is quite different to how other cameras will perceive it. If you have a look at this section here, I want to show you um, another camera I was flying with. Now, I'm flying here on my Batman 220, which I think has a CCD micro camera in it, and the lighting is completely differently. So the, the WDR works very well at lighting the sky and the ground but when you come round to the sun which is quite low on the horizon round here somewhere you can see that it it lights the scene area completely differently so it's it's kind of having a little bit more of a problem there and thus you've got some slightly darker ground details so this is much more like how it was to the naked eye but you can't necessarily pick up as much detail you can see that the stuff under the trees is quite dark. Now again this is going to be very much a matter of opinion about what people like to fly in. If you want to see more though this is where the 19S does a little bit better in sort of showing you more scene. I'm I don't know I'm, I'm sort of on the fence about it I kind of like looking at that uh, that sort of sun in the sky giving it sort of little golden hour effect but this does light up a little bit more evenly you can't really tell it's early evening it just pretty much looks not too different than it did at midday so yeah I don't know that that's that's one for a, a sort of personal opinion that one certainly I I didn't mind flying with it at all it seemed to do a pretty good job I was just conscious of the fact that I thought it was very much like the Rattel in what it was trying to do and what it was promising to do but it came up short against that but fairly good as a camera generally but as I mentioned in the intro, this also mentioned being a sort of starlight camera having this uh, amazing low light sensor. So we should talk about how it performs in the darkness. Here we are in my garden, just about to test the camera in the dark. I want to show you this on a phone because it lights up a little bit better than a GoPro does. It's not pitch black. I can see kind of the grass behind me. Uh, I can see just up there. And you can obviously see some little details on the house here. Um, so yeah, I've got my fat shocks on. Let's get the quad and see what happens. So yeah, I'm not flying. I'm basically just carrying around my quad in the garden in the dark. There I am. You can just about see me. This is on its default mode, which is colour. You can't really see colour, but you just get some sort of colour noise, if you like. And I can see enough 
using my fact sharks to basically look around and see where I'm going. What I did do is plug the little uh, OSD board back in and I could try switching it to black and white. Now one thing that Rattel did was work really strangely in black and white and go all blurry. This looks um, a lot better. We don't get the blurs uh, but it's still quite hard to see. Over this area is where it's really really dark and I can't see much but you can see looking back there we've got uh, a little bit more light so it doesn't do bad there and we've also got this mode called EXT which I have to say I don't know what it is it looks like it goes in the color mode auto is supposed to flick between color and black and white I had to say looking in my eyes as I was I felt like I had a little bit more detail in color when I look back at the DVR black and white looks like it's a little bit sharper a little less noisy but Perhaps seeing that just those little flecks of colour gives me the impression that I can sometimes see a bit more. Anyway, it, again, it it performed pretty well in low light. If you're in real darkness, like we are in this corner, you you won't see much except some digital noise, really. And once again, it doesn't quite do as well as the uh, Cadex Rattel, but yeah, I think it does pretty well in low light, and conversely, does pretty well in uh, normal light as well. So you know, all round, fairly good camera. Sometimes it's quite tricky being a reviewer because you get to look at quite a lot of different cameras and bits and pieces and you can become a little bit spoiled with like this one is the best, I want to use that one sort of thing. So when something comes along like this, which is certainly above average and it does the job and it's a pretty good camera, but it's not the best, you're like, well, is it okay or will people want this or will they want the better one? Will they want to spend that extra to get a little bit better? Is it worth it? I don't know is the quick answer. So I've been talking about um, this little Cadex Rattel, which is almost the same looking. It, it feels like it's been modeled after it. It's better in the daylight. It's better in um, the darkness. And the difference there is a difference of about 10 pounds. So this little um, Ishii 19S is coming in at about 18 pounds UK. These, these might change, I hate to mention them, but I'm just mentioning them as a comparison site. It's about £10 more expensive, coming up to 27 at the moment. So if you watched my footage taken with this and you thought, hey, that looks pretty good, then brilliant. If you're thinking, you know what, it's worth that extra £10 to get better, then the Cadex Rattel is your friend, and that's certainly available, and I still think the best camera around at the moment. But also within this price range, almost the same price, in fact, you can get this little Foxeer Mini Arrow Pro, which I thought was a really good camera as well. CCD looks a bit different, but I'll put some links either up here or down below in the description so you can check those out. I think all three of them are worthy cameras. This one suffers, I think, mostly because it feels like it should be the same as the Rattel, and the Rattel is better. Standing on its own, it's a pretty good camera, but it's not the best, but it is quite cheap, so you know. Anyway, Take a look at the footage, see what you think. It's a quite a capable camera, that's why it's still on this quad. I haven't taken it off yet, because there's no reason to do so. It flies absolutely fine. But if you're looking for a camera, I would certainly encourage you to look at the footage I took on all these three and see what you thought looked good and see what you thought your money is best invested in. And of course, look around at other people's reviews, because not just my opinion matters, believe it or not. Anyway, this has been the Ishin Bat 19S FPV camera, perhaps the worst name ever for a camera. Come up with something catchier. Kindly supplied by Banggood for review, so thanks to Banggood. And of course, you will find links down below where you can get this and the other cameras I mention in this review. Hope that's been helpful, and I'll catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.